starts right now. This morning, more trouble with migrant crossings at the border. We have a reaction on Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star. I'm ABC's M. Wynn in Washington. Former President Trump is now pushing back on a target letter that indicates he may be indicted again. The details coming up. Looking out there with a live cam this morning. This is a sign we're already starting at 80 degrees this morning, but we're going to check in with Mike to see just how hot it's going to get it this afternoon. Felt like a toaster out there yesterday, mm -hmm. Alvin. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. It is July 19th. Happy Wednesday. Thanks for joining us. Uh, did you get out in the heat? Actually, you did in the to, morning. I had to run some, well, yeah, we, we did. Our, we're recording a new GMSA commercial right now. All of us will be doing that. Uh, it was very warm, breezy, and Mike's been talking for a couple days about it being a little drier outside. Definitely felt that I see early that. in the day. Yeah, I can yeah. see that in the late in the afternoon too. In the afternoon, it is more tolerable if you're outside. I had to do something very quickly, and it was like, wow, you know, the sun is just intense. You get in the shade, and it's like. OK, it's not quite as bad. And that's going to be the situation again today. We did hit 104 yesterday that tied the record two days in a row. Today we're going to make it three in a row. Not a record, but uh, I don't know if that really matters now. It's just going to be plain old hot. We're at 81 right now, 82 at Castroville. And even though this number is actually uh, down a little bit compared to this time yesterday, it felt more humid. Uh, I think it's because the temperature's up uh, just a little bit. It feels like right now 84 here in town. 85 is the heat index. Castro 87 up there at Canyon Lake. Uh, mold is on the low side and throughout the rest of today we are going to, oh, by the way, it's a yellow day as far as the CPS energy conservation. Scan the QR code. Want more information about that and throughout the day. 92 at noon, 104, like I said, three in a row. And we do still have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings. The pinkish area with the excessive heat warnings is not as widespread as yesterday. It includes Atascosa, Frio counties. No counties are under any sort of advisory in the Hill Country. But of course, it doesn't matter if you're under an advisory or not. It's still going to be very hot out there. We were talking about that slight rain chance this weekend. That still does exist, although I wouldn't get really excited about it and we'll talk about uh, well any break from triple digits that's coming up in just a couple of minutes Steph Mark thank you Mike new this morning US Geological Survey reporting two earthquakes that happened in our area overnight the survey says two separate quakes rumbled about 11 miles east of Pleasanton it says a 3.2 magnitude quake happened just after midnight this morning the other happened around 1122 so far we haven't received any reports of damage this morning, Governor Greg Abbott is defending Operation Lone Star, saying the policy is not compromising the lives of those crossing the border. That's after a state trooper said migrants were left bloodied from razor wire barriers and that orders were given to deny people water in sweltering heat. Case okay, so that's John Paul Barajas explains now somewhat the governor to suspend Operation Lone Star. It has nothing to do with border security. This is uh, this is border insanity. All of this represents a new despicable low. Democratic members of the Texas congressional delegation reacting to allegations against Governor Greg Abbott's Operation Lone Star, along with Republican Tony Gonzalez saying in part, quote, I find it disturbing for anyone, much less a child, to be deprived of water in 100 degree weather, regardless of their immigration status. Those allegations were made by a state trooper via email to a supervisor saying patrols were ordered to, quote, push the people back into the water to go to Mexico, deny migrants drinking water in extreme temperatures, and that the razor wire is a, quote, inhumane trap that should be removed. We cannot be for inhumanity. We cannot be for murder. We cannot be for aggravated assault. Domingo Garcia is the national president of the League of United Latin American Citizens, known as LULAC. He agrees border security is needed, but believes that it can't cross moral lines. The blood of those five immigrants who died last week on that river, it's on you, Governor Abbott. Those reacting today asked for a swift investigation by the Department of Justice, including State Senator Roland Gutierrez. His statement says in part, there are few greater sins in this world than watching children scream in agony from traps that were set for them. Gutierrez also wants federal authorities to shut down Operation Lone Star. The White House reacting to the report as well. If they are true, uh, it is abhorrent, it is despicable, uh, it is dangerous. And Governor Abbott's office sent out a joint statement with the Department of Public Safety that reads in part, no orders or directions have been given under Operation Lone Star that would compromise the lives of those attempting to cross the border illegally. It goes on to say all personnel assigned to Operation Lone Star are prepared to detect and respond to any individuals who may need water or medical attention. And we have that full statement on our website, KSAT.com. 
John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. This morning, former President Donald Trump lashing out at a new target letter he received from special counsel Jack Smith. It's the clearest sign yet that the special counsel will seek charges for Trump's alleged efforts to illegally cling to power after he lost the 2020 presidential election. ABC's M1 has the latest from Washington. This morning, Donald Trump now facing his third and most serious allegation as special counsel Jack Smith appears set to indict the former president as part of the wide ranging investigation into the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Trump announcing on Truth Social he received a target letter from investigators late Sunday, which he says almost always means an arrest and indictment. Trump in Iowa saying he's becoming an expert in subpoenas. I have no choice because we have to. A source says the target letter mentions three federal statutes, conspiracy to commit offense or to defraud the United States, deprivation of rights under color of law and tampering with a witness, victim or informant. Trump says he was given until Thursday to testify before the grand jury, but sources close to the former president say he's unlikely to accept. Trump on Fox News claiming without evidence that investigators are in a rush because of the upcoming election. Now it bothers me. It's election interference. Never been done like this in the history of our country and it's a disgrace what's happening to our country. Smith is also looking into efforts by Trump and his allies to cling to power in key states where he lost, talking to local election officials in Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, Nevada, and in Georgia, where Trump was recorded pressuring the Secretary of State to, quote, find the votes he needed to win. So what are we going to do here, folks? I only need 11,000 votes. Fellas, I need 11,000 votes. The Michigan Attorney General charged 16 people on Tuesday, accusing them of acting as fake electors, submitting false certifications after the 2020 election, claiming Trump had won the state. The district attorney in Fulton County, Georgia, is also leading an investigation into Trump's alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 election results in that state. A decision in that case is expected next month. M. Wynn, ABC News, Washington. Ukrainian officials say Russia has launched an intense series of nighttime air attacks using drones and missiles against targets again across Ukraine. The head of Kyiv's military administration says the southern port city of Odessa was targeted with especially fierce strikes for a second consecutive night. No casualties have been reported so far. Meanwhile, a fire at a military facility in Russian annexed Crimea caused the closure of an important highway and the evacuation of over 2,000 civilians from four villages. The investigation into the death of rapper Tupac Shakur is still active. Las Vegas police just now served a new search warrant in the case. It's not known exactly where that took place. Shakur was shot multiple times in 1996 when leaving a boxing match at the MGM Grand Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. That case was never solved. Time now is 438 and 80 degrees for now. Up next, some easy steps you can take for reducing breathing in irritants and allergens this summer. And a quick check of the roads with Transky looking over at I-35 at Loop 410 where things are moving this morning and looks good so far. A lot of jackpots are up, temperatures are up, we're up across the board. We'll see how high things could go today with meteorologist Mike Osterhage coming up. 441 from traffic to Saharan dust, allergens and smoke. A lot of stuff could be in the air that we can breathe in, and that can be a problem. Especially for people with allergies and asthma. 12 on your side's Marilyn Morris shows us how to track air quality and breathe a bit easier. Thick orange haze from the Canadian wildfires continues to bother folks up north. It was the scariest looking um, sky I've ever seen in my life. It's uncomfortable and can be harmful. Microscopic particles and smoke are linked to asthma, coughing, difficulty breathing, and even non-fatal heart attacks. Here, to a much lesser extent, we deal with summertime Saharan dust. It can bring in pretty sunsets, but can also be irritating to sensitive respiratory systems. To stay on top of air quality, you can sign up for alerts from the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality or the KSAT weather app. You can also get current and forecasted air quality from the EPA's Air Now website and app. It's showing moderate Tuesday. Other apps, IQ Air, Plume Labs, and Purple Air monitor it too. When pollution levels are high, it's best to stay inside and keep outdoor air out of your home. Weather stripping helps. 
and consider an air purifier. Look for an air purifier with a HEPA filter to get smoke out of your home. A carbon filter will help it get the smell of smoke out too. Consumer Reports tested air purifiers by injecting smoke particles into a sealed room. Top in those smoke tests, the Allen Breathe Smart 75i Pure and the Blue Air Blue Pure 211 Max. I would definitely get an air purifier. And remember these, if you do have to go outside when the air quality is bothersome, wearing an N95 face mask can help you breathe easier. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Time now is 443 and 80 degrees for now. Soccer super megastar Lionel Messi has joined the MLS team Enter Miami. Up next, reaction from David Beckham and Jorge Mas. And welcome back. It's 445. Soccer superstar Lionel Messi has joined the MLS team Inter Miami. And the co-owners David Beckham and Jorge Mas are speaking out about his arrival. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, when it comes to reshaping the world of professional soccer, no one's bending it quite like Beckham. As co-owners of Inter Miami, David Beckham and Jorge Mas shocked the world by announcing Lionel Messi's move to an American soccer team. This morning, they're speaking out to GMA. Now that it's official, can you open up a little bit? Tell us about the process of luring Leo Messi, the best soccer player in the world, to Miami. There could be three major events in the history of the sport in this country. Pelé in 1972, David Beckham in 2007, and Lionel Messi in, in, in 2023. To bring a player like that to now play in the MLS, to play for our team, you know, it's bigger than just, you know, winning trophies. And we'll have much more with David Beckham and what's in store for Lionel Messi coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Let's look out there with TransGuy looking over at I-35 at Loop 410. Doesn't appear to be any problems here, but there are some construction spots across the city, so just... Be careful. Work Slow fast, down. guys. The sun will be up soon. Oh, I know. They're out there this morning once again. At St. Mary's. St. Mary's in Ashby. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, which is a good time to do it because yeah, even even with the lower humidity, it's when that sun is just beating down on you. You said and that was the situation. Yes. Y'all were outside shooting a promo yesterday. And yeah, it's, it's getting, you know, that's nothing like doing right. road work or roof work or anything. But, but. Well, we're in a studio all day. What I didn't factor in was the uh, light bouncing off the downtown buildings. Oh, yeah. yes. And the heat rating off those buildings downtown is unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Lighting's tricky. Again, that's why we always say all the temperatures, all the numbers we talk about are in the shade. You get in the direct sun and it feels even hotter than that. And there is really no relief. But boy, if this picture, if this face could, you know, Aww. just plead with you saying, <laughs> get cooler. Aw. Poor guy. Cash. Cash. I like that yeah. name. He's done. Cash the chocolate lab. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, unfortunately. Give him a boop, Mike. Exactly. <laughs> All right. We've got a lot of clear skies out there right now, but it did feel a bit more humid this morning, despite the fact the dew points are down uh, just a couple of degrees. And that does make a lot of difference, but the temperature is up ever so slightly compared to uh, this time yesterday morning. And we will see once again the humidity drop down in the afternoon, so it won't be as brutal as far as the heat index is concerned. There'll still be a little bit of it out there, but um, yeah, you get out in that sun and it just, just, I mean, just cooks you basically humidity comes back up tomorrow morning drops down back down in the afternoon so we'll continue with that 24 hour cycle we are in the uh, low 80s upper 70s right now and pretty much same temperature profile as yesterday we will make it up to 92 today at noon and then get top off at 104 so three days in a row not a record today uh, not tomorrow but it looks like friday we're going to be close to tying the record even though that's only 102 but we will still stay in the triple digits. All right, jump ahead to the weekend because this is still the chance for a couple of showers out there, but I got to really qualify this and say don't get too excited at all about the the chance for any rain. There will be one or two showers trying to pop up. Even this model has things coming in a little bit sooner by Saturday evening, possibly overnight into Sunday morning and then even during the day on Sunday 
Uh, one or two of them out there. Uh, most it going to be looks like uh, coming in with the sea breeze in the coastal plain. That will be the situation again Monday, and I think even going into the middle part of next week, we'll have at least that small chance for a shower to primarily along the coastal plain just because the high is going to kind of move out of the way and at least the door will be open. But again, this is not anything written in stone at all. It's just the opportunity will be there this weekend and going into next week. But one thing for sure, temperatures now that will drop a couple of degrees. We'll take anything as we've been saying, but no cold snaps by any <laughs> stretch. Today we are going to be nine degrees above the normal average high temperature, mm. of course, which is uh, 95. And then we get as we approach the first couple of weeks of August, that'll go up to 96 and then 97 for that about two week stretch in the first of August. Know how it feels mm -hmm. when you're trying to baste a turkey at Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. You open up the uh, oven door and Yeah, it's exactly yeah. how it felt yesterday around 4 p.m. in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yes. 450, 80 degrees. The new Barbie movie debuting in theaters this weekend. Up next, why lead star Margot Robbie tells us it's not just another Toy Story. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, three, eight, four, fireball three, daily four, five, three, six, two, fireball nine. Cash five, six, eight, 20, 25, 27. And your Mega Millions, 19, 22, 31, 37, 54, Mega Ball 18, Mega Flyer four. Good luck. The box office betting big on Barbie this weekend. And for the latest what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. You can go back to your regular life, or you can know the truth about the universe. The choice is now yours. The first one, the high heel. You have to want to know, okay? Do it again. Barbie leaves her dream house and leaps into movie theaters tomorrow night. The film, yes, about the doll so many have grown up playing with for years. But star Margot Robbie tells us it's not just a Toy Story. I think what was going to be important for this movie specifically is that we could honor the legacy of the Barbie brand, but also have a culturally relevant conversation with where we're at today and everything in between. Barbie opens in theaters this weekend, and some are predicting it could earn $100 million or more in North America. Opening opposite Barbie is a film that couldn't be more opposite, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer, about the father of the atomic bomb. And it'll be shown in several different formats across the country, but Nolan would prefer you see it in the biggest and best possible, 70 millimeter IMAX. Projectionist John Foley at Celebration Cinema North in Grand Rapids, Michigan says there's nothing like it. Even today, some of the digital projection technologies just cannot match the resolution. Only 30 theaters in the world can show the format, though, with 19 of them in the U.S. Break out the cowboy boots and your cut-off jean shorts. The 50th anniversary CMA Fest special airs tonight on ABC, hosted by Dirks Bentley, L. King, and Lainey Wilson. And even a sorcerer who can control time as birthdays, Doctor Strange star Benedict Cumberbatch is 47 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 5 to 5, 80 degrees. And measures to stop migrants along the U.S. border with Mexico are now under new scrutiny. Up next, we're going to get reaction after a state trooper said migrants were left bloodied from trying to get across the razor wire barriers. Plus, why Bear County is being sued for racial discrimination by a business owner. Ahead on GMSA at 6, an Australian sailor who survived months at sea is back with his dog on dry land. What he says he had to eat to survive. And checking trans guide right now. Tapping the brakes there at 35 and 1604. That could be one of our construction spots, but I'm just taking a wild guess here. Uh, Steven's going to cl clear things up for us coming up after this break. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Reaction continues this morning over Operation Lone Star at the border involving accusations of inhumane treatment of migrants. Hard for me to imagine a Texas a law enforcement member uh, thinking that those things were okay. But if it was true and if it did happen, then heads need to roll. That's inhumane. Up next, a response from the Texas Department of Public Safety. 
outside with live cam. Here we are, kind of same song and 30th or 40th verse as far as <laughs> uh, temperatures being right around 80 degrees here in the overnight hours just before the sun comes back up. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It is July 19th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Wednesday. I mean, I know we're going to hit the triple digits yeah. for the next few days, but at least, you know, on the forecast, it looks like it's going to drop just a little bit, at least number wise. We sure hope so, Mike Oster H. Yes, it will again. A degree each day down a little bit. We'll take anything we can get with these uh, hot temperatures. But the past couple of days we have hit 104 and yep, that's what we're going to be doing again today. 80 right now and the bottom number is at 71 dew point temperature and that's sort of the measure of moisture in the atmosphere. So yes, we do have a heat index right now of 84 degrees. It's, uh, it's a little on the humid side out there. That 104 won't be a record today. It tied it yesterday, but I don't know if that really matters or not. Just kind of a gee whiz thing. Boy, the aquifer. Wow. 1.4 feet heading down on the lowest aquifer readings we've had around here in about a decade or so. The mold is on the low side. Now, as far as the heat index around the area this morning, there's not much uh, difference here and there when you look at some of these numbers, but it, the temperatures do or the heat index does feel a little bit above what the actual uh, air temperature is as of right now. It uh, feels like uh, but 87 up there at Canyon Lake, 84 Castroville, and 82 right now down the road at Stinson. We do still have heat advisories and some excessive heat warnings in effect. Not as, well, it's still widespread, but does not include portions of the Hill Country or there along the Rio Grande. Still going to be very hot, so even though there's not an advisory posted, you got to still obviously use those uh, precautions with this very hot weather here out there. Warm and humid this morning and then 104. This is going to be three in a row today. Lower humidity though, so a bit more comfortable if you're in the in the shade. Down a degree or two tomorrow. And again, we're talking about little bits, but we'll take anything we can get small little steps and low 100s over the weekend. Yes, there is still a chance for a shower. No, I would not get too excited about it. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic authority. Good morning, Stephen. What's going on? Well, Mike flashing lights out here at 35 at loop 64. It was a shot we showed you as you we went to commercial break, but this is nothing too concerning. It's a lot of that overnight construction we mentioned earlier. This is wrapping up. We at least have one lane that is blocked, but you can see that we do still have those crews out there working to wrap this project up. It's likely part of the 35 NEX project, so we can expect to see crews out there for quite some time. But this portion should be wrapping up here momentarily. In fact, it looks like within the last few moments, some of those flashing lights may have disappeared. We'll get some more information confirmed through Transcot a little bit later. But as you can see behind me, the map is showing a little bit of a buildup out there as you approach Loop 1604, let's say from Live Oak. So be on the lookout for that as your commute does get rolling this morning. Now, the wide look at the map doesn't show any other issues out there, just a lot of that scattered construction and a lot of crews have actually been probably trying to beat that heat. A lot of overnight construction projects should be wrapping up, but none of it is slowing folks down. Even if you are traveling along I-35 southbound from New Braunfels, it should still be about a 29 minute commute to get here to the downtown area. 27 along 281 southbound. If you are heading in from Bulverde and along I-10 eastbound heading in from Bernie, it's a 25 minute commute. But back here on Transguide, looks like those flashing lights have disappeared, so that's great news, but traffic's already getting busy busy there at 35. I'll keep a close eye on things and I'll have more updates on what you can expect for your Wednesday morning commute coming up a little bit later on. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio fire crews were up overnight putting out a fire at a vacant home. Happened around midnight in the 300 block of East South Cross. Firefighters were able to mostly keep the fire from damaging nearby structures. However, a nearby car was burned. Investigators say the house is a total loss and the battalion chief says there is now a request in for the city to tear the dangerous structure down. No injuries were reported. It's life in prison for a convicted felon for his role in a shooting that killed this little boy. Four-year-old Darvion Whitley back in 2017. Now a group of suspects are accused in that shooting. Terrell Chase was given a life sentence for possession of a firearm. Judge Joel Perez enhanced his punishment because Chase was a habitual offender. Now, this case was part of the deadly drive-by shooting that killed four-year-old Darvion Whitley on July 19, 2017. More than 60 shots were fired into that home Whitley was in with his brother and mother. Darvion's mom spoke with us after the sentencing. I sometimes ask God, why should I forgive him? Or how can I forgive a person who took my child's life? I never get an answer. 
only response I get is forgive. Chase is still facing that murder charge, but the district attorney's office isn't saying how that will be handled. The other two co-defendants charged with Darvion's murder are John Chapman and Quentin Phillips. Both men are scheduled to be in court on September 15th. Bear County is being sued for racial discrimination by a business owner. The lawsuit claims both the county and Lyft Fund. The organization tasked with awarding funds for the Bear County Small Business Assistance Program discriminated against small business owners based on race. The program's application awarded points to businesses owned by veterans, women, and minorities. The higher the score, the more likely the business would be selected. Greg Gom, owner of Digital Desk here in San Antonio, and a group called the Wisconsin Institute of Law and Liberty have filed a lawsuit stating Gom was put at a disadvantage because race and gender were taken into account. Attorney Dan Lennington explains what a win in court would look like to him. That Bear County stops discriminating based on race, um, that they're told that what they did was illegal. This is not about monetary damages. It's not about um, uh, what our client could get as far as dollar amounts. It's about making the behavior stop. And this all comes after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled places of higher education could not take race into consideration in the admissions process. Lennington says that ruling has broader implications. Both Bear County and Lift Fund declined to comment. New allegations of inhumane treatment along the southern border. A Texas state trooper claims officers were ordered to push migrant children back into the Rio Grande and even deny migrants water in the extreme heat. ABC's M1 has more on the accusations and the fallout. This morning, ABC News has obtained emails sent from a Texas state trooper to his superior describing, quote, inhumane policies on the border, saying troopers were told to deny migrants water and were even told to push children back into the river. The trooper saying we decided this was not the correct thing to do with the very real potential of exhausted people drowning. It's hard for me to imagine a Texas a law enforcement member uh, thinking that those things were OK, but if it was true, and if it did happen, then heads need to roll. That's inhumane. In response, the Texas Department of Public Safety issued a statement saying the troopers are the ones who perform rescues while trying to stop migrants from placing themselves in harm's way. The trooper also raised concern about the risk posed by newly installed razor wire, providing pictures of serious injuries suffered by migrants and describing a pregnant woman who got stuck in the wire and experienced a miscarriage. Texas Governor Greg Abbott's office responding, saying Texas is deploying every tool and strategy to deter and repel illegal crossings between ports of entry. Critics question if that strategy is going too far. We know here from this email that we have a medic within the Department of Public Safety that had a crisis of conscience that said we are treating these people in, in, a, in a horrible, inhumane way. Meanwhile, the latest data from Homeland Security shows a 30 percent decrease in migrant encounters at the southern border compared to this time last year. M1, ABC News, Washington. Time now is 507 and 79 degrees for now. Just ahead, why the White House is announcing a U.S. Cyber Trust Mark label for smart home devices. You'll see a new art at the San Antonio International Airport. A mural there is currently under construction. Up next, the special meeting it has and when you can see it. Outside with live cam on your early Wednesday morning, made it to hump day. We'll take a look at your forecast coming up. Welcome back. New art will soon greet travelers at San Antonio International Airport. Artists have been hard at work on the mural, and we spoke to one of the artists who was at the airport. She said a big theme of the piece is the hidden treasures in San Antonio. I feel very honored uh, that I was chosen to be part of this, of this project. I feel it's very important because whenever I used to travel, it was uh, through uh, the San Antonio International Airport. So whenever I used to come back, you know, from uh, being in Philadelphia, being away from home, I, I always wanted to see, you know, something that would warm, you know, something with warm colors, something iconic. And now I have the opportunity to do that, to represent that, something that will, you know, whenever people are arriving to the airport, they will feel that they're, you know, they're being welcome here in the city to San Antonio. 
Some of the features on the piece include the San Fernando Cathedral, the Spurs, and of course, the world's largest cowboy boots at North Star Mall. You'll be able to see the new mural at baggage claim this fall. Have to check it out. Yeah. 512, good. 79 degrees. Meta rolls out the first feature of Day 2 Thread since it launched earlier this month. Up next, the changes you'll see. And next, Elon Musk talks about a brand new Twitter feature. One legendary icon deserves another. Get in! The future of Chevy electric SUVs has arrived. See Barbie only in theaters July 21st and experience the all new Chevy Blazer EVSS. Looking for a bladder leak pad that keeps you dry? All of the things that you're looking for in a pad, that is always discreet. Look at how it absorbs all the liquid and locking it right on in. You feel no wetness. Oh my gosh, totally absorbed. I gotta get some always discreet. Want more from your vitamins? Get more with Nature's Bounty. From the first ever triple action sleep supplement to daily digestive support to more wellness solutions every day. Get more with Nature's Bounty. Just about 516, the Biden administration has announced a cybersecurity label program that can help consumers choose smart devices that are less vulnerable to hacking. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in your morning Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, new labels for smart devices. The White House has announced a new plan placing labels on Internet-connected devices that meet security standards set by the federal government. The logo is meant for items generally found in homes. The program starts next year. Next, Meta is out with the first update for its social network threads. The update adds a follows tab to the activity feed, which makes it easier to see who just followed you. Users will also be able to access a translate button. And finally, Twitter is planning to give you more space to express yourself. Elon Musk says they're working on a feature that will let users publish very long articles, even books. It appears to be part of Twitter's efforts to attract more creators. No word on when the feature will officially roll out, but posting full books as tweets sounds like a great addition. A novel idea. A rite of passage. Those are your tech bites. Okay. Okay. I, was, I love reading the temperature in the room after Andrew drops those right. on us. <laughs> it's, it's not the same if he doesn't do it. And he does yeah. the pregnant pause there to yes. so yeah. make us yeah, yeah aware. We're aware. We're very aware. Yes. Yes, we are. Well, good morning, family. Hey, good How's morning, everybody doing? Oh, it's been good. We were just talking about how the week's been a little bit slow. It's been crawling. It's, been, it's crawling this week. We're crawling to the weekend, but... Yeah. We know a lot of people are ready to drive off and get their day started. Yep. Guess what? Not a lot going on this morning. We did have some overnight construction that wrapped up along 35. Uh, just to get a quick look at the morning commute. 281 at Grayson is looking like a pretty quiet shot in the north and southbound lanes. And as we show you around US 90 at Couples, east and westbound lanes aren't too bad. As same goes for 410 at Old Pearsall Road. Uh, wide look at the map really just shows a lot of that scattered construction. You see it in and around the Alamo City. One of the areas where we saw a bit of a delay was actually right over here at 35 southbound at loop 1604. This is around the Live Oak area. We had some road work that was slowing some folks down. Now we still hint, uh, see a hint of yellow out there, which indicates a very minor congestion, but there is still plenty of work taking place within that area. Let's talk about what's happening here along loop 1604 on the northeast side. There will be striping work. It's actually been current for a while. And again, this work is overnight. It should wrap Saturday, July 22nd. In that time, we'll see the exit ramp closure of loop 1604 that connecting westbound ramp from from I-35 southbound to Lookout Road. So again, if you've driven through that area, you know that there are a ton of TxDOT crews out there working to improve the roadways, and they're doing it all overnight, Mike. I think they're just trying to beat this heat somehow. There was a lot of overnight projects that wrapped up just a little while ago. Yeah, and again, we've been talking about how even though the humidity is down in the afternoon, so it's easier in the, the shade, if you will, uh, we still have, you get on the direct sun, and it still is just brutal out there. And I don't know what uh, tells us story more him lying down or just that look on his face oh. just that wide eyed look. <laughs> so at least that guy found a little bit of shade uh, out there yesterday afternoon we've got a lot of clear skies right now and 
As far as keeping track, yeah, we've we got to start marking these things now. Comparing to last year, we were at 39 triple digit days at this time. This is through yesterday, and so far this year we are at 24. Now we will continue to rack up triple digits, so we are going to be adding at least right now. It looks like seven to 10 more to this. So we're going to be getting up into probably the mid thirties as far as racking up triple digits here in town. Dew points are down ever so slightly compared to this time yesterday. So what's interesting though is the humidity or excuse me, the temperature, it seems like it's up maybe a degree or two. So to me, it felt like it was a little more humid out there when I walked outside, but the humidity, like I said, will be dropping down by later on today and then we'll go through that cycle. So at least we are into that cycle, unlike and I keep referring to remember a few weeks ago when we had those we just couldn't get rid of the humidity in the afternoon. And that's why we had those uh, heat index readings, you know, that were 115 and above that. Not the situation, though, in this forecast. So that's one glimmer of hope, if you will. Plenty of sunshine today, already up to 92 at noon. And yep, we're going to hit 105. Four, make it three days in a row at that. Now, weekend, still talking about that small chance for some rain Saturday evening and then maybe overnight into Sunday. But again, this is not really that encouraging. Most everything going into next week is going to be just kind of that sea breeze type thing. But at least there's going to be that chance because the high, which is almost right on top of us right now, overall is not going to really change that much. The center of it does tend to slide off to the west and northwest a little bit more. So we get that northwesterly flow, maybe some of those showers Saturday night. And then as that stays a little further off to the west, at least that opens up the door to the Gulf of Mexico. So we do get one or two of those sea breeze showers. But the overall picture doesn't. It's those subtle little changes there. So what that means is basically just triple digit temperatures all the way across the board in through the weekend into next week. And we will have that small little chance for a couple of showers or two going into maybe Saturday evening, Sunday. But again, I've got those chances on there. Don't get really excited. All tiny chances, but, mm -hmm. but chances. Yes. And you'll always let us know when we can get excited, right? Yes, indeed. I will. Thank you. I just want to make sure. He would be excited. I'll, I'll be the first to, you know, strike up the band. It here, would be so. infectious. You're so excited, but you're not excited right now. Not, not yet. Chances, okay. No. Okay. Thank okay. You, Mike. 71, 79 degrees. <laughs> up next, why Hollywood is hoping for a big box office weekend with Barbie and Oppenheimer as migration prepares to fly into theaters. Take a look at your lottery numbers and we'll talk about those uh, jackpots too, okay? Pick three, three, eight, four, fireball three, daily four numbers, five, three, six, two, fireball nine. Cash five, six, eight, 20, 25, 27. And your Mega Millions, 19, 22, 31, 37, 54, Mega Ball 18, Mega Plier 4. What are the jackpots? Me Nobody won Mega, so mm -hmm. it's up to 720 for Friday night. Wow. Powerball still at a billion for tonight. It's <laughs> a lot of money. Good luck. 525, most movies expected to debut big at the box office this year have missed the mark. So could this be the weekend Hollywood has been waiting for? CNN's David Daniel has a look in today's Hollywood Minute. Hey ladies, let's do this! Will Barbenheimer save the box office? Industry observers forecast Barbie could be the first film to debut with $100 million or more since Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse in early June. While Oppenheimer, with higher IMAX ticket prices to help make up for its R rating and three-hour running time, could be looking at a $50 million opening weekend. With Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1 expected to bring in 25 million or more, this could be the biggest box office weekend. And 79 degrees for now. As the country heats up, so do the number of heat-related illnesses. Up next, how emergency rooms are trying to keep up and why trying to escape on a summer vacation may not help either. Are you ready to talk about your car's extended warranty? Well, up next, how the FTC is getting ready to combat unwanted scam calls. I was going to say, I get calls for that all the time. <laughs> uh, plus, why Target employees are so excited that they get to wear shorts now. Especially here in South Texas. And ahead on GMSA at 6, important news if you take prescription medications, how the food you eat could keep your meds from working. As the record heat continues across the country, people are doing whatever they can to cool off. It's pretty unbearable, um, unless you're in AC or near water. So I was like, we're going to the water. 
Up next, why taking a vacation this summer may not get you any relief from the heat. And looking out there with live cam, same story here. Are you finding yourself in the afternoon running to your car so you don't have to spend time outdoors? Well, that's what I'm feeling lately here. Running faster. Yes. For sure. We're all getting in shape running to our cars oh, and are. indoors. Oh, we are. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday, the 19th. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Whenever I go to the grocery store, it always seems like, what's more intense, the sun beaming down right. or the heat coming off the, the asphalt uh, right. the parking yeah. lot? Yeah, it's so, never fun or trying or to park far. Or watching people with their carts look out the window and go, <gasps> <laughs> That's yeah, for it. Yeah, almost today. It's almost like that. Yeah. Think about those HEB workers, you know, when they have oh, to push those yeah. carts. Oh, God, uh, yeah. that's a workout. Once they're hot, too, yeah, and they're take hot. them from the parking lot. Yeah. You know, we showed video of people in the water, though, and even if you're in the water, still got to stay hydrated because yeah. that can, can bring it out of you as well. Just anytime you're outside. And, and like the experts always say, too, is don't just wait till you're outside. Hydrate constantly to keep that moisture up in your body just all day long, basically. We've got a lot of clear skies right now. It is warm, it is humid out there. We, uh, temperatures a little bit above what it was at this time yesterday. Dew points actually down slightly, but I don't know, it just seemed like it was more humid when I stepped outside. Uh, Overall, though, about the same as what it was yesterday. Southerly wind, 11 miles per hour. Heat index right now, 84 in town. So that's actually up a couple of notches again compared to this time yesterday. Same thing, Canyon Lake at 85 and 83 right now. They're at Castroville. Mold is on the, the low side, and we do have heat advisories, excessive heat warnings. Now, not as much. Remember yesterday, the excessive heat warnings, that kind of dark pink purple shade, was all along the I-35 corridor in the metropolitan area. Obviously, that has been sort of downgraded, if you will, and nothing posted along the Rio Grande or out there in the Hill Country, but it's still going to be hot, obviously, so use all those uh, precautions. Temperatures will warm up very quickly up through the 80s this morning. We make it up to 92 at noon and 104. Three days in a row yesterday, of course, we tied the record today. The record's 106, so it's not going to hit that, but I think that doesn't really matter nowadays. It's just going to be very hot. We do get a slight break in temperatures, like a degree two degrees here and there going into the weekend and there is that small chance for a shower but again the the theme today is don't get too excited about those rain chances details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority okay any big problems out there well it's been chill over here mike uh, <laughs> thankfully as the commute is getting moving a lot of folks really won't encounter too many problems out there we did have some overnight construction that is wrapped uh, you know a lot of folks are trying to beat that heat so we may see a few more folks out there this early in the morning but nothing is slowing folks down at this hour it's very early so just be on the lookout still dark outside but uh, we also have a stall vehicle that popped up here off of 410. This is in the westbound lanes at Evers Road. It's not causing any issues, but I always like to remind people it's dark, so make sure to watch out for those flashing lights. And if you see an emergency vehicle out there, make sure to move over or slow down. So wide look at the map doesn't show any other problems. Just a lot of that overnight construction and some of it will even ramp up a little bit later this morning. Again, none of it's slowing folks down as we take a look at some of these travel times. Still pretty pleasant along I-37 northbound. It's about a 29 minute commute to this early in the morning. And if you're heading in from Castroville, that would be the time to do it. US 90 eastbound, we can expect about a 30 minute commute. And our friends down in Lytle, the arrival should be about 17 minutes along I-35 northbound right here to the Alamo City. One last look around Trans Guide 410 at Austin Highway. Way, you're seeing a little bit more traffic pickup out there. That's usually a spot where we tend to see more vehicles and we'll keep a close eye on things. Looks like there may be a stall vehicle along 281. We'll take a closer look and I'll have an update coming up in the next few minutes. Steph. Thank you, Stephen. Some people in our area have been on shaky ground and may not even know it. The U.S. Geological Survey is reporting two earthquakes that rumbled through the Pleasanton area overnight. Our Katrina Weber is there live, and it seems these were not the only quakes this week. Did anyone feel them? Well, so far I found only one person who was even aware that there were earthquakes. That's a convenience store clerk here who told me he actually got an alert about the quakes overnight on his phone. For everyone else, this was no earth-shaking event. Now, according to the USGS, there were two quakes in this area overnight. The strongest was a magnitude 3.9, which hit after 1130 last night. The other one that was recorded was a magnitude 3.2 shortly before one this morning. The data also shows that Pleasanton had a very minor quake Monday afternoon, a magnitude 2.1. But again, it seems that these all went virtually unnoticed. 
Now, the USGS says that damage usually occurs with quakes at a magnitude 4.0 or higher. But uh, I did check with the police and sheriff's departments in this area. They say they haven't had any reports of damage overnight. So it seems that instead of being shook, people here are more shocked to find out that this even happened. Reporting live in Pleasanton, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you. Much of the southern U.S. under heat advisories and warnings again today. Traveling for summer vacation to escape it might not help. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, tourists are encountering record temperatures in several countries. It's so hot in parts of the U.S. this week. Nevada's tackling extra road repairs. When it's over 100 degrees, our street temps can be over 140. It makes the asphalt soft and big heavy trucks can cause ruts in it. This Phoenix doctor says his ER is trying to keep up with heat-related illnesses. We'd probably use about five or six times that. Uh, unfortunately, we're starting to run out of ice. And this news camera overheated in Death Valley. In fairness, it's the literal hottest place on earth, although some might say that about their own backyards today. It's pretty unbearable um, unless you're in AC or near water. So I was like, we're going to the water. Plenty of Americans are escaping their hometowns for summer vacation, but that doesn't mean they can escape the heat. Italy, France, China, and Japan have new temperature records from this week. Wildfires are burning on multiple continents, and Delta says a flight in Las Vegas didn't even make it off the tarmac Monday because at least one passenger was treated for heat-related discomfort. Health experts just suggest going someplace cool. The most common mistake people make is trying to tough it out. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. The Biden administration is suspending funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology that follows a months long review that determined the Chinese Research Institute was not compliant with federal safety regulations. The Department of Health and Human Services is also barring the Wuhan Institute from doing business with the federal government going forward. The facility plays a central role in the theories that the COVID-19 pandemic may have originated from a lab leak there in late 2019. An Australian sailor who survived months at sea eating raw fish and drinking rainwater with his dog is now back on dry land. Tim Shattuck from Sydney and his dog Bella were found stranded in the Pacific Ocean after their boat was damaged in a storm weeks into their trip from Mexico to French Polynesia. Well, finally, after months without seeing land, a helicopter launched from a fishing boat searching for tuna spotted Shattuck. The crew provided him with medicine, food and water before returning him and Bella to land. It's amazing. Time now, 537 and 78 degrees for now. We'd like to talk to you about your car's extended warranty. Up next, if you're tired of getting scam calls that sound like that, how a new effort could soon help you get fewer intrusive telemarketing calls. And people working at Target can now wear shorts. We're going to tell you the reason behind this new wardrobe policy change. And to be honest, we always thought that they could. <laughs> I didn't even notice. Outside with live cam, looking at one of the freeway interchanges. Traffic is building. We'll check in with Stephen to see if there are any problems out there for you early bird commuters. Welcome back. It's 541. In your morning consumer headlines, Target has changed its dress code to allow most of its employees to wear shorts to work. That is nearly 440 thousand people who can now don their legs while earning a paycheck. The announcement comes as much of the country deals with record breaking heat. Now, Target used to only allow employees who worked outside to wear shorts. And I think this is what we see, you know, the employees outside wearing okay. shorts. Yeah, for curbside pickup. The new dress code doesn't specify shorts have to be khaki. They can be actually any solid color. Disney's CEO is working to calm staffers who are concerned about the potential sale of the company's TV assets. Bob Iger spoke to senior leaders of Disney's television businesses in an off-site meeting Tuesday. He told a source, he told personnel that the content created by Disney's TV production teams is valuable to their business. His talk came days after Iger suggested in an interview that Disney's linear business, quote, may not be core to the company, end quote. The statement reportedly caused high anxiety among those with Disney General Entertainment Content Division. The division houses Disney's linear business and operates broadcast and cable networks such as ABC and the Disney Channel. 
If you're tired of getting calls about your car's extended warranty, well, help may be on the way. The Federal Trade Commission announced a new effort called Operation Stop Scam Calls to crack down on illegal telemarketing. The initiative goes after people who provide telephone numbers to robocallers. Authorities say these so-called lead generators have sold more than 700 million phone numbers, often lying about the owners having consented to receive telemarketing calls. And all, the initiative involves more than 180 actions that are being supported by attorneys general in all 50 states. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Why is the Federal Trade Commission telling us they're doing this now? I mean, should, isn't this what they should be doing already? Uh, well, maybe they're excited about going about it a different way. I'm not sure, I'm but not yeah, sure <laughs> it's right. been a while. <laughs> Let us know how it goes, FTC. Right now, 543, 78 degrees. The Animal Defense League is up next with a very special pet. Aww. And checking Trans Guy, Tenant Medical. We'll talk to Stephen coming up a little later in the newscast. All right, looks are definitely, or I should say actions, are definitely deceiving with this guy. You're going to meet him in a second. Now he's here from the Animal Defense League. And who is this boy? So this is Colby, yeah. and surprisingly, he's nine years old. She walked in with this guy. He is just, I mean, active. Look at the, he, the energy. Nine-year-old dog and maybe a shepherd mix or something. Do you see yourself? Yeah, he's definitely considered a shepherd mix, but I think he has a little bit of doby in him, and he's just wonderful and sweet and very laid back. And this guy will be a good running partner with you because he still has a bunch of energy. And I'll tell you what, playing in the backyard with the kids, throw a tennis ball around, he will just, yeah, he, he's still got a lot going for him. Yes, hello. Hello, little boy. And you've got that nice little distinguished gray around the muzzle. I like that. So <laughs> anyway, what y'all got going on? So he's actually part of our Empty the Shelters um, adoption special. So in partnership with the Bissell oh, Pet me. Foundation, okay, here we go. he uh, qualifies and um, all of our pets over six months of age are $25. Yeah. Um, so he comes in. He's also our Subaru pet star. So he, Subaru has been so kind to support his adoption. So they'll, it'll be covered if you come and adopt him. Everything covered with him? Mm -hmm. Really? Thanks to our friends at Subaru, yes. Okay, that yeah, bargain at any price with this guy, because he is, like I said, just as you were talking about, great personality, a ton of energy. If you'd like more information about that, always looking for fosters out there as well. 1100 Nacogdoches, Paul Jolly Center, over there by the zoo, PetSmart and Four Winds, or ADLTexas.org. Thank you, dear. And big problems out there at I-10 and I-35. Here's Stephen with an update. Yeah, three lanes blocked here, guys. Take a look at this TransGuide camera. It's not showing anything good. Let's get a wider look as we bring you in. You notice that we have emergency vehicles that are out there. And again, those three lanes are blocked due to a major crash that's been reported by TxDOT. It's not necessarily a clear shot, but what we're able to make out as our friends at TransGuide are taking that camera in is slow moving traffic. And I do notice that there's at least uh, one fire unit and I'm making out what looks like to be uh, paramedics also on the scene. So I'm hoping everyone's OK out there, but no word yet on any injuries or how many vehicles are, may have been involved. This crash was just reported a few minutes ago, so we're keeping a very close eye on it. And as you can see, it's right there on I-10 westbound at I-35. No buildup just yet that's been reflecting on, that is reflecting on our map, but it's an area I'll keep a close eye on and let's hope for a better update soon before morning rush does get here. So all vehicles still reported at 410 westbound at Evers Road. This has not been causing any issues, but just Check those vehicles before your commute does get moving this morning. Wide look at the map does show a lot of construction. I'm not concerned about that right now. The real topic is going to be back here on TransGuide I-10 at I-35. This is right around US-90. So a lot of folks will travel through there as the commute does get moving. So we're down to one lane. And I'm getting ready to send a tweet so we can send a push alert out. Make sure you have your KSAT mobile apps downloaded. Notifications turned on. Thank you, Stephen. Dogs are splitting too. Oh, yes, wow. indeed. And, you wanna, <laughs> and, and it's best to do this, I think, inside, so you yeah. can have the concrete get oh. heated up there. But yeah, squirrels aren't the only ones. And with all that hair, I bet uh, it's tough for that guy to keep cool there. But Yeti. Oh, Yeti. Yeti is smiling. <laughs> the Golden Pyrenees. Oh my gosh, that's a gorgeous dog.
All right. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAT Connect picture. Appreciate that one, Yvonne. All right. Lots of uh, clear skies. You can see what appears to be an airplane off there in the distance. And uh, temperature stands at 80 right now. 79, so upper 70s, low 80s, about where it was yesterday. Humidity's about the same. May feel just a, just a hint more humid this morning or a hint warmer this morning. Not anything showing up in the satellite picture around here right now. And we basically have the same picture as we've had the past couple of days. Everything up to the north of us is pretty much moving straight west to east, and this actually is around a big clockwise rotation right there. And then storms going through the Tennessee Valley, the Ohio Valley, and off to the northeast. And the culprit is the high, which is parked just about, uh, well, just off to the west of us right now. Now, as we go into the weekend, as that starts to kind of shift around a little bit, some of that rain up there to the north, or at least some of the energy, is going to try to work its way in here. We'll get into a bit of a, a northerly flow in the atmosphere. So now this does tend to kind of paint things in with a broad brush. So yes, a couple of showers are possible. No, do not get too excited about this. This is going to be very few and far between. Pretty much same thing on Sunday, but notice how this kind of shifts over in toward the coastal plain. So that's going to be the case as we go into Sunday and the first part of next week. At least the Gulf is going to be open. So you get some sea breeze coming on in here. Whether they make it further in, uh, it's kind of a wait and see situation. Not really a great chance. Still have that small, you know, 10% chance for a shower or two going into the first part of next week. But one thing for sure, it is definitely going to be staying on the hot side going into next week. We're still looking at triple digits around here. So three days in a row at 104. Today we are going to be hitting it. And then, yeah, temperatures will ease. The high tends to just weaken ever so slightly. So we go down a degree tomorrow. Same thing Friday going in towards Sunday, uh, but still staying in the low hundreds. Still like today, nine degrees above normal. And then going in toward uh, next week, it'll be about uh, three, four degrees. Excuse me, about five, six degrees or so above normal as we get up in toward 96 for our, our normal high temperature. That small chance for a couple of showers around here over the weekend. You know, one or two here or there. Again, I, I hope for the best, but don't get really excited about this. Okay, well, we won't, but we'll, we like seeing even just a degree yeah. cooler. We'll just, I need some. Looking at my yard, and all yards around there. Ugh. Send large block of ice to Mike Oster Hage. Remind me later. Yes. <laughs> uh, 552, 78 degrees. Christopher Nolan makes big movies from Inception to Interstellar to the Dark Knight trilogy. For his latest film, he tackled one of the biggest stories of all time. We're going to get a special preview next. We're in a race against the Nazis. And I know what it means if the Nazis have a bomb. Killian Murphy plays the father of the atomic bomb in Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer. This is a matter of life and death. Can perform this miracle. World War II would be over. Our boys would come home. We're trying to not judge the man. We're trying to experience things with him and understand the man. And I felt that Killian, who's one of the great actors of his generation of all time, he has that unique empathetic ability to draw the audience into the, the truth of the situation. Nolan sought Murphy for the title role after casting him as a supporting character in five previous films. I was so exhilarated to be given the opportunity. You know, it's a kind of a dream part, but, but it's so multifaceted and massive. His co-stars also felt the scope of the story and the film. A huge amount of humility was required from this whole cast to kind of come in and say this is a really delicate and important story and we want to uh, service it correctly. It confronts you with things that are so much bigger than you on, on a human level and on the, a physical world level in what we live in. And yet it, uh, it's an emotional movie because of because Chris really and Killian really pulled off that initial thing that he said it's you it's it, you do come through Oppenheimer's heart. eyes. I don't know if we can be trusted with such a weapon. But we have no choice. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel.
Here at home, San Antonio ISD needs help. It's holding a summer educator job fair. The district wants people to work for its elementary, middle, and high schools. The fair happening at Lanier High School today from 5 to 7 p.m. Take your resume and good luck. We'll head the next hour of GMSA outrage at the border over how DPS troopers and soldiers from the Texas National Guard are allegedly treating migrants. And up next, wild video shows a car flying through the air and into a house. How the deadly crash unfolded on camera in just moments. And Transguide flashing lights at 10 and 35. We'll be back.